Hi again. Welcome to episode 23 of Doing Things on Purpose with me, Suri Stahel. This podcast is where I share my thoughts as a wife and mother of two, looking to empower parents to rediscover meaning and joy in their lives again, beginning with the small steps of taking charge of their time, health, relationships, and money by doing things on purpose. Now let's get straight to the all-important mom check-in, because you know and I know that we can't even begin to do any of these things if we're running on empty. So today's mom check-in is a simple, how y'all doing? I heard this beautiful statement last week, which I thought would be perfect for us to use as a check-in question for ourselves. It's, how do I feel and what do I need? Because I can sit here and say, do your yoga, start a journal, try gardening, try this, try that. Because those are all the things that have worked for me. But I don't know your life. I don't know what you need. But you do. Maybe you're feeling emotionally dysregulated. And you just need a five-minute break. A cup of tea, hot chocolate with marshmallows, a long walk, or even a warm bath. Maybe you're overwhelmed and confused and need to sleep on it before you make that big decision, answer that mail, or reply to that text that's been bothering you all day. Maybe you need to get out of your head and play ball with the kids for a while. Maybe you're feeling fragile and just need to ask for a simple, reassuring hug. All of this can be acts of self-care. The act of noticing and giving ourselves what we need. So again, whenever life feels too much, stop and ask yourself, how do I feel? What do I need? And give it to yourself. And if you don't know where to start, just take a deep breath in and think, cool air in, and then a deep breath out, hot air out. This week, I've been thinking about the things that happen when we rush. Of course, everyone is different. Some people absolutely thrive on pressure and stress until, of course, they don't. But I've noticed this in myself and also in others that I work or volunteer with, that rushing is more often than not counterproductive. Every parent can probably relate to rushing to get the kids ready in the morning, to get them to brush their teeth, take a bath, be in their pajamas, and then in bed at an acceptable hour. At work, we're rushing to create content, to meet project deadlines, to finish a proposal, or to submit a report. Because we live in an outcome-focused, productivity-based society, we feel that the more we do, the more we accomplish, the more successful and fulfilled we'll feel. We believe thoughts like, if I don't get this done immediately, it's not going to get done. So it has to be now. If I can only get this thing off my plate as soon as humanly possible, it'll all be okay and I can finally relax. But it's not always that easy, is it? First of all, if we stop and ask ourselves the question, How has all this rushing affected us? We can start to notice some telling patterns. I certainly can in myself when I'm rushing. Again, everybody's answer would be different, I know. But notice, how does rushing affect my body, my feelings, my thoughts, my actions, my energy, my focus, my inner intentions, my communication style? And of course, my effectiveness in completing the task that I'm trying to rush through. For many of us, rushing feels overwhelming, like we've gone in over our heads and we can't think straight. We feel like we're balancing three spinning plates and hoping that it all doesn't crash down and break. Our feelings get dysregulated. We get angry quickly and we disengage from our caring, understanding selves. It's almost like we become a machine and not a person anymore. 
our thoughts start to become harsher, more judgmental of others, how they're not fast enough or good enough. And we start making quick assumptions about what's going on and what others are thinking and doing. We feel we have to because we don't have time to ask questions. We've got to work with what we think we know right now. Our focus becomes laser sharp to get things done. We're only focused on completion, a set outcome. And we kind of stop caring about who we have to perhaps intimidate, manipulate, or bulldoze into doing that. In other words, we stop seeing people as people. Because right now, for our purpose, we need them to be machines too. We need them to get things done. And how does this affect our energy? It starts to feel hot. It expands because we feel like we've got to stand in our power. We start to dominate. We become more curt in our communication, more directive and less open and collaborative. So where does all this get us? Yes, after we've gotten our kids to bed, our partner to do the dishes, and our co-workers to finish that project, what do we come out with on the other side? A feeling of relief? Sure, we're glad that the stress is finally over. But what else? Maybe a work that's done, but kind of messy, overcomplicated, and full of unnecessary mistakes. Because the truth is, elegance and simplicity takes time. Or maybe we ended the day with a more strained relationship with our kids, our partners, or our co-workers. And probably we're also noticing a slightly overinflated ego, that sense of accomplishment, that, yes, I got it done. I made it happen, which somehow nobody else seems to appreciate. So it feels like a hollow win. So what's a person to do? my suggestion is to get on the slow train. For those of you noticing all of these things bubbling up inside of you, you're probably a person who does not thrive on rushing or adrenaline, like me. So what is then another way to think about productivity and the art of getting things done? Again, without much rushing or pushing, how would it feel like If we just allowed ourselves and others even a little more time to do things, a realistic amount of time, and we can be clear on that. Because if we're honest, usually our deadlines are kind of soft deadlines. In many cases, they're self-determined or at least something we've agreed to without thinking much about it. So the first thing we can be clear to ourselves about is to take full ownership of noticing when things get too much for us. Don't expect that to come from our kids, our spouse, our boss, our friends, or our coworkers, because they don't know us like we do. And then when we're pros at knowing ourselves, we can start to notice it in other people when something's too much for them. This brings us to the practice of being brave and clear to others about what we need, or about what others might need. We can start to play around with being more flexible, start accommodating each situation that arises when things don't always go the way we initially wanted them to, which is most of the time. Because in the end, it really doesn't matter what exactly happens or doesn't happen. Because fortunately, most of the things we do are far from life and death situations, although it might seem to be super critical at that point in time. I get it. But we can step back and realize that we can only do our best and trust that others do too. We can choose to remember that people always come first. That's including ourselves. And when we prioritize our meaningful relationships, the how to move forward can often quickly become clear to us. It becomes easier for us to show up from a place of patience, kindness, compassion, courage, and clarity. Now, I'm not talking about people-pleasing or being a doormat here. I'm talking about the ultimate human relation skill, the art of truly learning to get along that I think we're sorely lacking in today's fast-paced society 
because we weren't taught this. Therapists, social workers, educators, and coaches are taught this. The art of building positive rapport, how to motivate, encourage, and support one another. All important things in relationships and, of course, in getting things done. So if rushing isn't working for you, why not shift gears and try taking that extra 5 to 10 minutes to be fully present, lighthearted, and unrushed with your kids before they leave for school? Why not take an extra night to sleep over that difficult email or proposal and then look at it again tomorrow before sending it out? And why not ask yourself, is this really the right time to tackle this? Am I too early? Can this wait? I think the skillful leader knows that rushing things that can wait just to get things off their plate often leads to confusion and unnecessary stress. It is both kinder and much more effective to know when to act and when to wait. So what's my take on the whole thing? I think in an increasingly confused, muddled up world, moving at an ever increasing pace, we always need to be mindful of returning back to our center. We need to practice looking within and learning skills to release all that hot air when rushing starts to overcome us however that practice may look like for you. We need to learn to land and ground again in our own sense of humanity as often and as best as we can. I think for both our sake and the sake of every person we interact with. Because we are not machines. We are beautiful, colorful, imperfect, surprising humans. So let's return full circle back to the question, how do I feel And what do I need? Can we extend that to how does he or she feel? And what do they need? Or even how does this situation feel? And what does it need? Such powerful questions to ask ourselves to positively influence how we move and interact with the world and in our most treasured relationships. It might just teach us to enjoy the doing a lot more instead of focusing on the finishing. So that's all I have for you today. Something to think about. I hope this has been helpful if you're also suffering from the widespread affliction called rushing. If you feel like sharing your thoughts, questions, or worries about motherhood or life in general, reach out to me at surishtahel at gmail.com. As usual, my guide for parents and the show notes of this episode are available on my website at surishtahil.com and you can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider sharing it with a friend. And I want to thank you again for listening to Doing Things on Purpose with me, Suri. I'll catch you again next time.